I appreciate everyone being here. My name is Naomi Ingar. I'm the Communications and Training Coordinator for the Chilean Prevention Research Center and the Chilean Center of Excellence in Maternal and Child Health. Today is the start of our 20, Spring 2018 Health Racism and Communication Seminar Series. We're very excited to have um, two of the national leaders from Girl Trek here speaking about their experiences um, with this topic of health racism and communication. And um, I want to also thank the other uh, event sponsors, um, the student groups who are partnering with us on this uh, event and the series for the semester. Uh, the Society for Young Black Public Health Professionals, the Tulane um, African Student Association, Salud for Latin American Communities, and the Tulane Society for Sexuality, Health, and Gender. Um, and Kiara here from Salud is going to uh, introduce our speakers. And um, we do need to leave the room by one before one o'clock because a class is coming in. So please just keep that in mind. Um, if you haven't already, please do sign in outside and take an evaluation form. Those are important because that will help us know if we are meeting the needs of you all, our audience, and also suggestions for future seminar topics and speakers. And I'll let you know. Hi everyone, my name is Kiara Cruz and I'm the president of Salud and I have the honor to be introducing our speaker. So our first one is Joel Bush, is the National Communications Director for Girl Track, the largest national health movement and nonprofit for black women and girls. Jewel Bush is a New Orleans based writer, storyteller, and award winning journalist who has 16 years of experience as a communications strategist working for some of the top national organizations of public health, women's reproductive health, and workers' rights. Our next speaker is going to be Onika Juris, is Girl Track's Chief of Organizing Strategy, where she focuses on leveraging the power of Girl Trek's nationally trained volunteers, like myself, while engaging local and national community partners to grow the movement to one billion, one million women walking by 2020. So we need you guys to start walking. Previously, Onika served as a 2015 in Argo city captain for Girl Trek New Orleans, where in a volunteer capacity, she successfully led the city and organized nearly 2,000 women 2,000 women in a year's time to walk in 12 different locations while engaging city leaders and advocating for black women's health and wellness. Onika is a former high, higher education professional with over 22 years of experience at SUNY New Paltz, Bernard College, Columbia University, and Xavier University. She also served. <laughs> good. She also served as the executive director of Youth Vanola, which we all know. Um, Onika is a proud member of Alpha Kappa Alpha Sorority Incorporated, a certified mental health first aid instructor, and a two-time marathon winner runner. So welcome me. Help me welcome me them. Hi everyone. Thank you so much for joining us here today and. It always feels really good and slightly embarrassing to see your <laughs> bio read, and you know. So thank you so much. That pizza looks really good. So, <laughs> so um, I want to like add more to um, what was said about me. I am from New Orleans, so it feels really good to be here in this capacity. Onika and I work a lot together, but we were sharing that often our work is national, and we're other places outside of New Orleans presenting about Girl Trek. So it's really good to be here for the home team talking about Girl Trek. So give it up for New Orleans. Yeah. So the work that I do for Girl Trek, it's just so immense. Um, I describe it as I wake up every day to work in the land of black girl magic. Like really, sit with that. I wake up and my job is to help black women lead healthy, happy lives. Like, that's what I get paid to do. So that's like, I just get chills saying that out loud. It's really good. I talk about how, how black women can be healthy, how we can be happy. So that's, that's what we do. That's what I, that's what I do. And so uh, I get to travel a lot. I get to meet women from, and people from all over the country. Tomorrow I'm going to be going to a conference in Atlanta called Power Rising, where black women will be united. Thousands of black women are coming together to set the national agenda as we lead into the midterms 
and into the 2020 presidential election. So big work is happening, and we get to do this, and it really is an honor. So, um, like you said, the first time that I get to stand and you know kind of have a conversation with her uh, and folks. So, um, what it is that today, um, I'll, I'll just share with you a little bit in terms of myself, and then just kind of give you a little rundown of what we're going to do, and then we'll jump right in. Um, but Naomi, thank you so much for, for having us. Naomi and I go way back. Um, like in my intro, I actually moved here from New York to be the executive director for Youth Run NOLA. I did a lot of really great work with Naomi when I was just kind of fresh. So it's kind of nice to have this opportunity that in just about all the work that I've done, we've continued to have a relationship. I wanted to set the timer to make sure that we were out of here by one o'clock. So I um, didn't know what I was doing. Um, so it, 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 so it's really nice to, to have this opportunity. Um, and so a little bit about myself. So um, when I actually worked for Youth Ranola, you know, we were teaching Midland High School kids how to run, and the parents would come, and it was kind of like, well, they were just standing on the sidelines, and we, you know, started this initiative of, no, you can come and be on the, you know, be on the white team. There were the folks that were kind of like walking in the back. And they started walking. And over months, women got into it. And you know, um, you know, a lot of our kids were black kids, so the moms were black moms, and they were like really got excited about that opportunity. So when this opportunity for me came up with um, Girl Trek, and we were talking about women and getting women to um, mobilizing women to say yes, we can do this, yes, we can move our health and around this whole concept of self-care um, powered by the civil rights movement. I was like, sign me up. Absolutely. Let's do it. And did it in a volunteer capacity. And, you know, a year later, I had the opportunity to join the leadership team as we were boldly going towards getting a million women across the country to move and to walk. So um, I know it's hard. It was hard to do because as a runner, I started running late, you know, um, it, my journey was late and it was difficult. So this is really a labor of love to be working, um, working with black women every day and working with really great community partners around who believe that, you know, there, there needs to be equity in um, health care and um, just fitness for everybody. So it's really some um, so, so, so stirring work that we do every day. Um, so what we're going to do today is just really give you a little insider view into what it is that Girl Trek is. I know as I look out, there's a lot of folks that, yeah, I know a little bit about Girl Trek. I'm walking with Girl Trek or, you know, volunteering with Girl Trek. And so, but we want to really share what it is that we do, what our co-founders, what it is that they are doing um, every day and the vision that they had. And so we're going to watch a video, we're going to have some discussion, and then we're going to tell you how you can kind of engage with us. How's that sound? Yeah? All right. So to get started, and because we are a moving organization, if we had time, we'd be taking a quick little walk around, right, to kind of get you to feel what it is. Um, but we're going to do something. And so um, I'm going to ask a couple questions. And what I want you to do is stand up, if it is that you can identify with that question. And you're going to stand up, but then you're going to also to look around to see who else is standing with you. Who else you have that same um, mistaken that every day you have in common. I'm sure that you guys did some form of this before, so you're familiar with it. So um, I want you to do that. So the first question that I have here is, if in the last 24 hours you helped someone or someone helped you, stand up. Aww. Look around. <laughs> Check it out. <laughs> Stand up. All right. 
Sit down. Okay. If you have a favorite physical activity that you look forward to doing, stand up. All right, look around. Check out to see who they are. All right, sit down. All right. If it is that you know someone who has hypertension, stand up. Look around. All right, sit down. If you know someone who suffers from depression, stand up. Look around. All right, and sit down. If you know someone who has suffered from a stroke, stand up. All right, sit down. Last question. If you know at least five people, anywhere from three to five, that can be do a, that can do a better job or need to be inspired about moving, getting fit, eating healthy. All right, just look around. Okay, and that could be anybody, right? So thank you for doing that. And the reason why I asked for you to look around is because, again, we're, we're all struggling. We've got things in common with, right? And so we're part of this community that every day we're thinking about how we can be a better self. And we struggle with this. Um, in the girl tech world, in the black, the black women that we talk about, when we ask that question of hypertension, stroke, diabetes, a lot of us are affected by that. So I'm not going to go too much into that because we'll talk a little bit more about that. But what I want you to do is, as we watch this video, as we watch the video, um, what I want you to, what I want you to think about is what you felt, what it is that you felt when you stood, when you stand up, what is it that you were feeling? Um, I want you to think about who the women are that you were thinking about. I want you to be sick with that in your mind as you watch the video. What we're going to watch is, so this is a picture of Girl Tech co-founders, uh, uh, Vanessa Garrison and Morgan Dixon. And back in April of last year, I had the opportunity to do a TED Talk, very powerful TED Talk. So we're going to watch that today. We're going to talk about it. We're going to unpack some issues and um, just really have a really good discussion. So um, without further ado, we'll, we'll, do, we'll listen to that TED Talk. I am Vanessa daughter of Annette, daughter of Olympia, daughter of Melvina, daughter of Katie, born 1878, Parish County, Louisiana. And my name is Morgan, daughter of Carol, daughter of Lisa, daughter of Willie, daughter of Sarah, born 1849 in Bardstown, Kentucky. And in the tradition of our family, the great oral tradition of almost every black church we know honoring the culture from which we draw so much power, we're going to start the way our mamas and grandmas would want us to start. In prayer, let the words of my mouth, the meditation of our hearts be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. We call the names and rituals of our ancestors into this room today because from them we receive a powerful blueprint for survival. Strategies and tactics for healing carried across oceans by African women, passed down to generations of black women in America who used those skills to navigate institutions of slavery and state sponsored discrimination in order that we might stand on this stage. We walk in the footsteps of those women, our foremothers, legends like Ella Baker, Septima Clark, Fanny Lou Tamer from whom we learned the power of organizing after she would almost single-handedly register 60,000 voters in Jim Crow, Mississippi. 60,000 is a lot of people, so if you can imagine, me and Vanessa inspiring 60,000 women to walk with us last year, we were fired up. But today, 100,000 black women and girls stand on this stage with us, 
We are committed to healing ourselves, to lacing up our sneakers, to walking out of our front door every single day for total healing and transformation in our communities because we understand that we are in the footsteps of a civil rights legacy like no other time before and that we are facing a health crisis like never ever before. And so we've had a lot of moments. We've had a lot of great moments, including the time we had on our pajamas. We were working on our computer. Michelle Obama emailed us and invited us to the White House and we thought it was fatal. We've had a lot of moments. But this moment here is an opportunity. It is an opportunity that we don't take for granted. And so we thought long and hard about how we would use it. Would we talk to the women we hope to inspire a million in the next year, or would we talk to you? When we decided to talk to you, and to talk to you about a question that we get all the time, so that the millions of women who hopefully will watch this will never have to answer it again. It is why are black women dying faster and at higher rates than any other group of people in America from preventable obesity-related diseases. The question hurts me. I'm shaking a little bit. It feels like value laden. It hurts my body because the weight represents so much. But we're going to talk about it and invite you into an inside conversation today because it is necessary and because we need you. Each night before the first day of school, my grandmother would sit me next to the stove and with expert precision use a hot comb to press my hair. My grandmother was legendary, big, loud. She filled up a room with laughter and oftentimes curse words. She cooked a mean peach cobbler, had 11 children, a house full of grandchildren, and like every black woman I know, like most all women I know, she had prioritized the care of others over caring for herself. We measured her strength by her capacity to endure pain and suffering. We celebrated her for it, and our choice would prove to be deadly. One night after pressing my hair before the first day of eighth grade, my grandmother went to bed and never woke up. Dead at 66 years old from a heart attack. By the time I would graduate college, I would lose two more beloved family members to chronic disease. My Aunt Diane did at 55. My Aunt Trisha did at 63. After living with these losses, the hole that they left, I decided to calculate the life expectancy of the women in my family. Bearing back at me the number 65. I knew I could not sit by and watch another woman I love die an early death. So we don't usually put our business in the street, we we'll just put them out here, but I have to tell you the statistics. Black women are dying at alarming rates. And I used to be a classroom teacher. And I was in, at South Atlanta High School, and I remember standing in front of my classroom, and I remember a statistic that half of black girls will get diabetes unless diet levels of activity change. Half of the girls in my classroom, so I couldn't teach anymore. And so I started taking girls hiking, which is why we're called Girl Tread, but Vanessa was like, that is not going to move the dial on the health crisis. It's cute. Because it's just a cute hiking club. So what we thought is if we could rally a million of their mothers, 82% of black women are over a healthy weight right now. 53% of us are obese. But the number that I cannot, that I cannot get out of my head is that every single day in America, 137 black women die from a preventable disease, heart disease. That's every 11 minutes. 137 is more than gun violence, cigarette smoking, and HIV combined every day. It is roughly the amount of people that were on my plane from New Jersey to Vancouver. Can you imagine that? A plane filled with black women crashing to the ground every day, and no one is talking about it. So the question that you're all asking yourselves right now is why? Why are black women dying? We ask ourselves that same question. Why is what's out there not working for them? Private weight loss companies, government interventions, public health campaigns. I'm going to tell you why. Because they focus on weight loss. They're looking at these skinny jeans without acknowledging the trauma that black women hold in our bellies and bones. It has been embedded in our very DNA. The best advice from hospitals and doctors, the best medications from pharmaceutical companies to treat the congested heart failure of my grandmother didn't work because they didn't acknowledge the systemic racism that she had dealt with since birth. A divestment in schools, discriminatory housing practices, predatory lending, a fat cocaine epidemic, mass incarceration putting more black bodies behind bars than were owned at the height of slavery, but Girl Trek does. 
for black women whose bodies are buckling under the weight of systems never designed to support them, Girl Trek is a lifeline. August 16, 2015, Danita Kendall, a member of Girl Trek in Detroit, received the news that too many black mothers have received. Her son Norman, 23 years old, a father of two, was gunned down while on an afternoon drive. Imagine the grief that overcomes your body in that moment, the immobilizing fear. Now know this, that just days after laying her son to rest, Danita Kendall posted online, I don't know what to do or how to move forward, but my sisters keep telling me I need to walk, so I will. And then just days after that, I got my steps in today for my baby Norm. It felt good to be out there to walk. Walking through pain is what we have always done. My mom, she's in the middle right there. My mom desegregated her high school in 1955. Her mom walked down the steps from an abandoned school bus where she raised 11 kids as a sharecropper. And her mom stepped onto Indian territory fleeing the terrors of the Jim Crow South. And her mom walked her man to the door as he went off to fight in the Kentucky Color Regiment. The Civil War. They were born slaves, but they wouldn't die slaves. Change making, it's in my blood, it's what I do. And this health crisis ain't nothing compared to the road we have traveled. So it's like James Cleveland, I don't feel no way tired, but we got to work. We started uh, looking at models of change. We looked all over the world. We needed something, not only that was a part of our cultural inheritance, like walking, but something that was scalable, something that was high impact, something that we could replicate across this country. So we studied models like Ongari Matai, who won the Nobel Peace Prize for inspiring women to plant 50 million trees in Kenya. She brought Kenya back from the brink of environmental devastation. We studied these systems of change, and we looked at walking scientifically. And what we learned is that walking just 30 minutes a day can single-handedly decrease all of your, 50% of your risk of diabetes, heart disease, stroke, even Alzheimer and dementia. We know that walking is the single most powerful thing that a woman can do for her health. So we knew we were on to something. Because from Harriet Tubman to the women in Montgomery, when black women walk, things change. So how did we take this simple idea of walking and start a revolution that would catch a fire in neighborhoods across America? We used the best practices of the civil rights movement. We huddled up in church basements. We did great grapevine information sharing through beauty salons. We empowered and trained mothers to stand on the front lines. We took our message directly to the streets, and women responded. Women like Lakeisha in Chattanooga, Chrysanthi in Detroit, Onika in New Orleans, Women with difficult names and difficult stories. Join Girl Trek every day and commit to walking as a practice of self-care. Once walking, those women get to organizing. First, their families and their communities to walk and talk and solve problems together. They walk and notice the abandoned building. They walk and notice the lack of sidewalks, the lack of green space, and they say no more. Women like Susie Page in Philadelphia, who after walking daily past an abandoned building in her neighborhood, decided, I'm not waiting. Let me rally my team. Let me grab some supplies. Let me do what no one else has done for me and my community. We know one woman can make a difference because one woman has already changed the world, and her name is Harriet Tubman. And trust me, I love Harriet Tubman. I'm obsessed with her, and I, I used to be a history teacher. I will not tell you the whole history. I will tell you four things. So I, I got about, I used to have an old saw, the kind of canvas top that drips on your head when it rains, and I drove all the way down to the eastern shore of Maryland, and when I stepped on the dirt that Harriet Tubman made her first escape, I knew she was a woman just like we are, and that we could do what she had done, and we learned four things from Harriet Tubman. The first one, do not wait. Walk right now in the direction of your healthiest, most fulfilled life, because self-care is a revolutionary act. Number two, when you learn the way forward, come back and get a sister. So in our case, start a team with your friends, your friends, your family, your church. Number three, rally your allies. Every single person in this room is complicit in a Tumman-inspired takeover. And number four, find joy. The most underreported fact of Harriet Tubman is that she lived to be 93 years old. And she didn't live a, just an ordinary life. Uh -uh. She was standing up with a good guy. She married a younger man. She adopted a child. She was a child. I was like, can she live? And I drove up to her house.
House of Freedom in upstate New York, and she had planted apple trees. And when I was there on the Sunday, they were they were moved because they moved. They were, they were they apples were in season, and I was thinking she left fruit for us. The legacy of Harriet Tubman every single year, and we know that we are Harriet, and we know that there is a Harriet in every community in America. We also know that there's a Harriet in every community across the globe and that they could learn from our Tudman doctrine, as we call it, the four steps. Imagine the possibilities beyond the neighborhoods of Oakland and Newark to the women working rice fields in Vietnam, tea fields in Sri Lanka, the women on the mountainsides of Guatemala, the indigenous reservations throughout the vast plains of the Dakotas. We believe that women walking and talking together to solve their problems is a global solution. And I'll leave you with this, because we also believe it can become the center of social justice again. Vanessa and I were in Fort Lauderdale, we had an organizer training, and I was leaving and I got on the airplane, and I saw someone I knew, so I waved, and as I'm waiting in that long line, like you guys know, waiting for people to put their stuff away, um, I looked back and I realized I didn't know the woman, but I recognized her. And so I, I blew her a kiss because it was Sabrina Fulton, Trayvon Martin's mom, and she whispered thank you back to me. Um, and I can't help but wonder what would happen if there were groups of women walking on Trayvon's block that day. Or what would happen in the south side of Chicago every day if there were groups of women and mothers and aunts and cousins walking or along the polluted rivers of Fort Michigan. I believe that walking can transform our communities because it's already starting to. We believe that the personal is political. Our walking is for healing, for joy, for fresh air, and quiet time, to connect and disconnect to worship. But it's also walking so that we can be healthy enough to stand on the front lines for change in our communities. And it is our call to action to every black woman listening, every black woman in earshot of our voice, every black woman who you know, think about it. The woman working front desk reception at your job, the woman who delivers your mail, your neighbor. Our call to action to them to join us on the front line for change in your community. And I'll bring us back to this moment and why it's so important for my dear, dear friend Vanessa and I. It's because it's not always easy for us, and in fact, we have both seen really, really dark days. From the hate speech to the summer of police brutality and violence that we saw last year, to even losing one of our walkers, uh, Sandy Lance, who died in police custody. But the most courageous thing we do every day is we practice faith that goes beyond the facts and we put feet to our prayers every single day. And when we get overwhelmed, we think of the words of people like Sonia Sanchez, the poet laureate, who says, Morgan, where is your fire? Where is the fire that burns holes through slave ships to make us bleed? Where is the fire that turned guts into chitlins, that took rhythms and made jazz, that took sit-ins and marches and made us jump boundaries and barriers? You got to find it and pass it on. So this is us finding our fire and passing it on to you. So please stand with us, walk with us as we rally a million women to reclaim the streets of the 50 highest need communities in this country. We thank you so much for this opportunity. <laughs> I've seen this TED talk countless times, and each time I still get chills. Still get chills. Onika and I, we were not in Vancouver, <laughs> but we were able to watch it live stream. And the reaction, I learn something new every single time I watch this talk. It's just, it's so good. And I'm by it. But it's still good even if I was working for Girl Track. So there's so much that was discussed and so much that was laid out. So it's like, where do you even begin, right? Um, part of my work with Girl Track as a national communications director is that I help Black women tell their stories. I encourage Black women all the time to write their first person narratives. And a lot of what we had here was Vanessa and Morgan's personal narrative their fire, the things that brought and motivated them to the work. I've helped women get their stories on the Rachel Ray Show and People Magazine in O. So there, we believe so importantly and deeply in the power of storytelling. And so history, right? 
We heard hear names like Ella Baker, Hakeem Clark, Harriet Tubman. Girl Trek is informed by history. The history is so rich. And from Harriet Tubman, like I said, to Ella Baker, to Rosa Parks, who I personally personally believe is one of the most mischaracterized and most misunderstood figures of the civil rights movement, right? We know Rosa Parks to be docile, but she was radical. So that's, we, we tap into that Rosa Parks history. We tap into the teachings of Ella Baker, Septima Clark, and Fannie Lou Hamer, who is among Harriet Tubman, one of Girl Trek's patron saints, right? So we look at the lives of people like Fannie Lou Hamer, who was an amazing organizer in the Deep South. Fannie Lou Hamer, she she was a fierce organizer. Uh, how many people have heard of Fannie Lou Hamer? How many people are gonna look up Fannie Lou Hamer after this? Okay, good. So um, in October, um, October 17th was Fannie Lou Hamer's 100th birthday. Fannie Lou Hamer passed when she was 59 years old from heart disease and cancer. Fannie Lou Hamer had spent so much time organizing and mentoring that she was not able to take care of herself the way she should have. Does that sound familiar? People taking care of other people but then when it comes down to taking care of themselves, their cup is empty because they've given and given and given. When we give and give to people, parts of that are supposed to be for ourselves, we make thieves out of them. They're stealing from us, right? And so Fannie Lou Hamer, when she was unable to go out and organize, she invited organizers to come learn from her on her porch. She sat on her porch in her nightgown, sick, and still passed on wisdom that inspired and guided the Freedom Riders. So this is some big stuff, right? Big stuff, big stuff. And so when we, for the centennial of her birth, we traveled to our hometown in Ruleville, Mississippi, right? Me and Onika got in the car, got on GPS and was like, where is Sunflower County, Mississippi? How far is that? Can we drive there at night? Real question, right? Two black women questioning how is it going to be us traveling in the new millennium in 20, 2017 at the time to Sunflower County, right? We had to think about those things because those things are real. So we went there, we met some of her family, we walked around Ruleville, Mississippi, and there were 300 solidarity walks held across the country to honor Fannie Lou Hamer on the centennial of her birth, right? And we used Fannie Lou Hamer's life as, as guidance, right? Not just Fannie Lou Hamer's life, uh, the lives of Harriet Tubman, Ella Baker, Septima Clark, and then we also have our personal ancestors, and there are thousands and thousands of other women whose names are not known who have had similar experiences, right? So, the health disparities. I've been doing public health communication for a long time, and whenever I sit back and look at the, the figures, just the figures not knowing context, as of the health disparities as they relate to the black community and black women in particular, I get really nervous, right? I am a black woman. I have black women in my family. I get really nervous and afraid for us because there is a health crisis happening among black women and girls. Black women and girls are dying faster than any demographic of preventable illnesses. And you're like, damn, why? Right, Vanessa and Morgan began to unpack some of that in the video, right? The statistics just, when I look at them, when I read them, 82% of black women are currently overweight. 53% are morbidly obese. 95% of black girls ages six to 11 will be overweight or obese by 2034. These are my cousins, my friends, you know, my family, people who look like me. So Morgan said that 80% of black women are over a healthy black weight, that one in two black girls born in the year 2000 will develop diabetes unless uh, levels of exercise and diet change. 
right? Did any of this surprise you all? So, so why? Why didn't it surprise you? Any other any other points? Um, she said that you can take a look at neighborhoods around the country uh, and even locally, and you can see how that feeds into the numbers at large. Yeah, no problem. So, yeah. So, do do you think that the black community and black women are aware of these statistics and these numbers? Maybe you can stand up and I'm going to allow it so everyone can hear because I'm not going to do it as a bit of a job of repeating back what you're saying. Um, I think yes and no. I think it's kind of normal. But more so, I think the difference is like our work is about trying to help the problem. But not to just keep the work that we're talking about to be that for a couple of months. Absolutely. And stress. Mm -hmm. Right? Stress. Stress can drastically impact your overall overall quality of life. And the stress of being a black person in America, the stress of being a black woman in America, the stress of being a black child in a black body in America is daunting, right? It, it, it's daunting. Uh, mental stress, physical stress, spiritual stress, chronic stress stem from factors like financial worries, bad relationships, long-term sickness. Am I going to have a job next week? Am I going to be cut? Will I have enough? We're talking about living wages, poverty wages. We're talking about gentrification. We're talking about the inability to find a place to live in neighborhood that you've grown up in. All of these things are real. Uh, stress can lead to weight gain, digestive disorders, increased pain, ne and negatively impact your mood, relationships, sexuality, reproductive functions. Stress can lead to addiction. Stress. A lot of this is stress related, right? If I am unsure how I'm going to pay my rent, do I have time to go take a walk for leisure? Probably not, right? And so that's the reality of what's happening today. And so Vanessa talks about historic stress and racism and trauma being a root cause for disease among black women. Any, what do you think? Any feedback about that? Any comments about that? Any surprise? <laughs> Maybe you can say that just a little thing here. I come off the like, how can you handle the book? Because it's not taking it. So, everything is going to be in your mouth. It's not going to be broken side wall. Exactly. And so the socioeconomic factors of being able to walk and exercise for leisure, right? One of the reasons why Girl Trek taps into walking is because you don't really need special equipment to walk. You can walk where you are. And yeah, that, that, that dovetails nicely into what, you know, do you feel safe walking where you live, right? What are the barriers and how can, how can the group that you're with alleviate some of those barriers, right? How many people feel safe walking in the neighborhood that they currently live in? Mm -hmm. Just throughout, like, the people who didn't raise their hand, why don't you feel safe walking in your neighborhood? Well, Right. One of the ways uh, Morgan, one of the co-founders of Girl Trek, has described Girl uh, described Girl Trek as kind of a neighborhood watch and sneakers. Right. We're, you know, we're not necessarily out taking names and writing things down, but we are cataloging things and we are having a presence. And sometimes just that positive presence, you know, can mean a lot. Like, hey, don't 
litter. Like I know in my neighborhood, I can kind of be like the an old lady on the porch. Hey, pick that up. Hey, where y'all going? Hey, what's that? You know, and that's some of the kind of things that we we bring the aunties and just the people in the community who are looking out and not looking out because we're gonna rat you out or report you to the police, but having you know what I've been seeing him do that. Let me talk to you for a second. What's going on? Right, have that just neighborhood presence, and so I mean, I can stand up here and just go on and on, but I'm gonna pass the mic to Onika Jervis, who had a special shout out <laughs> in the TED talk. No, 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 no. The one and only Onika. Oh, God, <laughs> so, um, so yeah, so the thing is about the special shout out in there is that, um, I know they talk about like this. The civil rights using the tenants of the civil rights movement, right? And um, I know Jewel kind of like went through it and just again, kind of like that whole history thing. But what does that really, really mean in real terms, right? I know y'all want to know that. Like, what does that mean? Like, when we talk about mobilizing and like in the role that, role that I play, I'm in the streets, in the parks, like around the women, you know, um, always in a girl's head shirt for the most part, no matter where. Just really trying to engage people. And um, so I'm wearing my family with the day because for the most part, you know, I kind of feel like that's who I'm embodying in the work that I do, which is that we really truly kind of talk to them and say, do this, you can't do that. And that's what like um what Jewel kind of talked about and with the TED talk, you know, like when and Vanessa were talking about, I just like and hopefully, you know, you guys are like, so what does that really, really mean? Sometimes we like tell people what we do, but they were like, no, but what does that mean? Mm -hmm. Right? And it's like, you could go on a walk or, you know, what organization do you belong to? Right? Let me tell you. And um, when I ask the question of who you know, is that an step of saying, how do we go back? Like, can I do something that works with, um, with you? So, um, what does that mean in a real day? So we actually do this, right? So we are mobilizing, we're saying revolution, self-care, revolutionary act, Carmen in, in Habu, I'm in my, uh, I'm in my grade today, kind of, um, you know, sending it out there. But we are just really thinking of um, what do we know? How do we tell them this information? And a lot of times, like you, you know, we know you guys are working something else and you're thinking about this often. And, but for the average woman, when we tell them this information, it's like, wow, right? Or then all of a sudden you're like, yeah, my neighborhood, my street, right? I don't have this stuff, and, uh, but I'm like, come with me, come with you, right? This neighborhood, watch, watch, and we can do it together. And so that's where um, we know that if it is that we don't treat this, we don't become this big time for ourselves. It's amazing. So let me ask a question in terms of like when um, usually one of the one of our mobilizing and methods is really trying to get women to say that thirty minutes for yourself, right? And you folks are like so burned first, and this goes across the board, and you know, for you holding it down as you know the little guy in the room. <laughs> um, how do we really find that 30 minutes for yourself? What would it be like if you really had somebody motivating you? That was free, right? For some of us, we could afford the gym or the personal trainer. But for the folks that we are really truly talking about, maybe to not make that choice of I'm going to do the gym or I'm going to get the personal trainer, right? So we're talking about your average everyday woman that just like, I can't. So what would it be like, like when you think of 30 minutes a day? Oh, there's another one back there. I'm sorry. <laughs> You're hidden there, right? Um, what would it be like for you if someone said, 30 minutes a day, I'm going to come get you. I'm going to do something to move your problem. You'd be like, yeah, right? So that's basically what it is that we are doing. We are actually um, teaching the history, getting people inspired, and then saying, come on, let's take a walk. We've got Gladys in here. Gladys, Gladys is one of our, uh, from the very first day, she has been walking, and Gladys holds down her walks at uh, Joe Brown Park. 
every Saturday, she has turned her own self-care into saying, I'm going to be a soldier for all the other women in my neighborhood. There's one thing special about Gladys. Gladys is one of those who's like, okay, I walk at 7 o'clock, but what time? You can't come and see other girls with time to walk. <laughs> and you're like, oh, I can walk at, you know, 9.30. She's like, I'm there with you. I'm going to walk. So there's sometimes Gladys is out there walking half a day, you know, <laughs> six, seven hours because she's making appointments because she is that invested, right? In terms of like, you, we've got to be those role models. We absolutely have to do it. So th those, those are some of the things that in terms of when we just think about what it is that our civil rights leaders did, what did Septima Clark do, right? In terms of, she said, I'm going to educate people to their rights as citizens. Girl Trek is like, I'm going to educate you to your right of what it's like to be healthy. That walking is the same type of adrenaline and that chocolate cake that makes you feel good when you eat it. It's the same thing when you walk that mile, right? Um, when you practice and you get out there every day and you do that 5K, it is the same endorsement that you feel. And unfortunately for us, that is not something that we know, unfortunately. But guess what? There's a whole lot more around the country that's getting that feeling. And Jewel is telling those stories that, you know, women are reaching out, and there's so many beautiful stories that's being told. So we talk about being role models out there and really ushering people across the finish line is something that girls are done. Simple women, um, they're actually doing that. So where is, um, where, where is she? Oh. So this young lady here, <laughs> um, one of the other models that we actually um, have is a girl pregnant said, so what is it that we did it to her mobilize this model? She said, okay, so yes, we're walking and we're talking. And you're finding out, and in those talks, we got to understand what were some of the other issues in our neighborhood. Yes, it's the sidewalk. So some of us are right here. And I'm going to just give you some examples right here, locally. But this is what's happening across the country. In Denver, it's happening. In Philadelphia, it's happening. And so with the sidewalk, we're like, no, we're going to get on that community to buy easy, and we are going to be there, and we are going to be public policy, but we are also to going to be out in the neighborhood when we fix the sidewalk we're going to be there. We're going to sit on the fifth of the community because guess what? We need to be able to be a part of the conversation. So we are doing that. So those are one of the things. Some of the other things that we heard was, you know what? I've been talking to this and we realized that the things we keep telling you is so cool over and over and over. How do you really feel in how you live life? And, you know, you might have friends who are like, kind of maybe a little scared to say, can you talk to somebody else, right, about it? Because they live in a black community, you might not necessarily feel the same thing. So, girlfriend said, nah, okay, we're going to address that issue. So, we said, we are going to get the funding and we are going to get the college campuses and we're going to make sure that we're going to mental health for so last year, we trained 150 students across um, ABC college campuses and <laughs> and said we are going to get them equipped to have this conversation. So that's what we did. Another thing we said in our neighborhood grocery store, women were talking about, so what do you eat? What do we eat? Now that we're walking, what do we do? How do we eat? We said, all right, we will take that. And so what did we do? Again, found some funding and said we are going to train women to become nutrition specialists. So creating all these partnerships with the American Council on its exercise, you know, um, now women can go to the grocery store and they can be faster for a growth of competition in terms of, you know what, you don't even want to go on the inside of the, of the supermarket for that box stuff. Let's just take the outside and get, get moving in, right? Healthy, creating relationships with the farmers market. So, we're talking about mental health in our community. We're talking about food. We're also talking about just fitness and, you know, the fun classes. Not everybody, again, can afford the economics of it. Not everybody can afford to take that Zumba class. 
will be once again backup funded is that we are going to train them to become fitness instructors so they can go work out with someone that looks like you, right? That might have the music like you. Even though we know there's other classes and we all are diverse and we all like to work again when we really talk about the inner cities of our neighborhood, we go like we need these people. You've got to get in there. So those are some of the initiatives like when we truly, truly talk about again, you know, Dr. Kendall Clark, she was talking about educating for voters, right? But we're talking about the whole gamut, how do we create, how do we provide education for our community so that they can just really take a part of this whole fitness um, opportunity, health and wellness. Um, and so that's what we, that is what we are doing in terms of how we go out there and do it. So walks in neighborhoods. Basically, we sell anybody, you know, if it is that you want to walk, the idea is we are going to walk in the neighborhood. We say neighborhood first, not necessarily a park. Because think about this, if I need to get in my car or get on the bus to get to a park, and depending on which city you're in, a park could be quite far to get to, right? So, um, how about let's walk in that neighborhood? Even if it's a field of space, if I'm with a sister friend, right? If I'm with four or five women, it feels a little safer. We can go out there. We can walk. So we said we are going to have these walks in the neighborhoods and in the parks. We're going to be in our blue shirt. So Michelle is walking her blue girl trek shirt, and so is Ravonda. We are going to walk, right? So that's what we do, um, basically. And then we branch out. We get political. We get engaged, we get our rights about students, and we do all these other things that, again, helps us to be engaged in our communities and healthy. So, so somebody's like, so what can I do? Right? Y'all are all wondering how you can help? All right. So we thought about this and specifically for, 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 for you guys. And this is, if you have friends, we're in, oh, so it's over 120,000 um, women walking with Girl Trek. We are in just about every city. So if it is that you were like, I'm just here for school or I have friends and family in other places that need to walk, please let them let them check us out. Um, there's something for everybody. But two specific things right now in terms of how you can help. So nominate a star. And somebody was asking how I can do. So for this new year, this new season, we are going to, um, we are looking for women that are ready to lead walking in teams. That I have to move it. So if you know that perfect person, like she has got the energy, people love love being with her. She can get anybody to do anything, and she is surrounded by some black women that need to move or that can move, enjoy moving. Please nominate, nominate. Tell me about her. We will get her trained and figure out where she can be. Um, so that's for any city, New Orleans, but any city as well. And so if it is that you can send us the email nominate at girltrek.org and put Tulane in it so I will know to open that right away. Um, that would be great. But again, um, if it is that we are, again, always wanting to have a really great leadership crew of volunteers that have the time and have the passion that can help us to power the movement around the country. The other thing is, is that for for you, I know I see some folks that are probably, you know, if it is that you're doing the work, you're a clinician, you've got students, um, you're in you're in a community organization running a program, please share it with your share it with your community residents. Tell them about Girl Trek. Even if they, they might be one that's close to them, or if it is that they can we can get one started, please just tell people about Girl Trek that we are here and we would love for to, to walk with them. So these are the ways that you can get engaged. Um, I was gonna say, I'm always wanting to like hear what you guys are saying, but no, I gotta follow along and wait for you. So questions, questions for, for, for Jewel and I. Yes. <laughs> Stay tuned. Stay tuned. The question was, she mentioned that there was a healing retreat that was held in Colorado in September. She wanted to know when was the next one. So my response was, we have to bring this to someone else. Stay tuned. Yeah. And so what she kind of mentioned about the, the healing retreat is one of the other things that Girl Trek has realized as part of 
or teach theory is that we need to create opportunities and examples of, of vacations or just experiences where black women can come and see that we are about the outdoors, that there is this there is this whole other life that's happening. And so we've been for the last wow um, four years we've gone to um, Denver, Colorado, and we're in the mountains for four days, and we are backpacking, we are hiking, we are spending some time with ourselves, we are meeting new friends, um, and just really getting powered by both the possibility of getting comfortable as we see a vision ourselves um, in our urban cities. Right. So that's something that one of the great experiences that we um, that we do, and I think it's important to say. That walking at Girl Track, walking is that first practical step to get women interested in living a healthier life, right? Mm -hmm. So, there are people who are in Girl Track but who are deeply rooted in other activities and exercises. So, you're like, Well, I don't really like to walk, so like Girl Track is not for me. That is not that, that's not the right way to approach it. Like I said, from walking, we have women who have trained to do triathlon, women who have taken up swimming. Women who hike backpack. Our um, co founder Vanessa last year climbed the Mount Kilimanjaro. So there are big, bold goals that women are um, using Girl Trek to set. So don't t see the walking and you know, you're discouraged. It really is a first practical step. Any other questions? Yes. Um, how did so some things will be not for children like the stress protest uh retreat that was in colorado but really girl trek is a family friendly organization there are walks where women are out there pushing stroller. There are walks where, you know, women may take turns running after somebody's house. Like, girl, get back over here. You know, I am a mother and I bring my son to as many things as I possibly can. I mean, he's older now, so I don't have to necessarily hold his hand. Now he's older, and I'm like, you know what? Take these pictures, post them on Snapchat. You're going to be my intern for this walk. So we are family friendly. So we do believe in that's all that the motherhood and child care can be a barrier. So when it is appropriate, we uh, we do provide opportunities for that to be addressed. But really, our walks are open to anyone to come. Like we were not like, oh, she got her baby, she can't come. Oh, she in a stroller? No, maybe she should just went out. That is not what we're about. We recognize recognize the real life implications and barriers of things. So we have. The pictures that here may have not been a women's stroller, the strollers, but check our Facebook, our Instagram, our Twitter. We really have pictures uh, and embrace young people and I'm, people bringing their kids. And so Jewel is right. So when she say we, who's the we? That was you, right? That's us. That's part of what we're doing. Is that we are getting you so inspired that when you say bring that sister along, there's no like real person to go to in girl trek to say, oh, how do I deal with that? That's where now you as a sister, you like bring that baby, you will be all right, I'm gonna push it, right? Push, you know, the carrier. Or you're gonna find some other sister, because you might be like, baby, it's not my thing. But you might find another one that is known for the dumb mind that will be there with you, right? So we are here. So again, the we is so we the community. think that is our community because we have just realized that this is a serious matter, that we have to support each other. So we will do that. Right on the West Bank, one of our team leaders, she actually has some stories in her car. She has a baby, some kids have grown, but she has stories in her car because she knows that somebody's going to say, no, I can't walk and say, I got you. <laughs> <laughs> Very good question. Thank you for asking that. Um, this might be Instagram pages and in terms of our um, 
Facebook pages. Right, so on the Facebook pages you are. But then even if someone and on, on our website that's kind of like going over a nice new um, new look right now. On our website you can there's a map that you can look internationally, you can use your zip in to see where there's where there's one. Um, so it's girl trek, everything for us is nice and easy. Girltrek.org or our hashtag is you know just at girl trek on Twitter. Um, there's a map that you can look internationally, you can use your zip in. So it's Girl Trek. Everything for us is nice and easy. Girltrek.org or our hashtag is, you know, just at Girl Trek on Twitter, um, Instagram, and, um, you know, you can just um, find us there. Or info at girltrek.org. Women's March there, she teamed up with them there. So um, being non-black, you know, that doesn't mean that uh, time to go home, girl. So I can't, I can't contribute in any kind of way. Not, our program is tailored for black women because we are addressing these very specific um, health disparities and issues, but we welcome and need support from all communities. And then like anything else, once we have this stuff, we know we're, you know, um, in terms of, we know that everybody is interacting with women of color, whether as a physician, whether you're a professor or not. So hopefully that came in your conversation, right? And your understanding of, and so your support of, which is really big. And so that's probably one of the biggest ways in terms of saying, I see you, and I'm in that with you too. Any more questions? Uh, <laughs> look, let me tell you something. We right. have, you know, we really need to form an official auxiliary group. Because, right. You know, sons, husbands, partners, dads, they are like, well, where's the man track? Where's the work? We need to be out there. And so we do, um, you know, we, we're, we welcome support sometimes the men are there. Maybe on the side with some water, or if we have an event, like you're like, okay, well, what you need? Let's be like, okay, well, you can move all of these tables. <laughs> you can support today. So we really, um, you know, and some women, you know, they, they do bring their, their younger yeah. sons. You know, my son has definitely, he's 15, he's coming, he's been my personal intern, pop around. Hey, Mel, hey, hey. Girl and, Yeah, so, um, so yeah, we, there is room for everyone to support. And in a real, real way, when we think about the age group that we're serving, um, there's a lot of older women. That if it is that you've been partnered up and loving somebody for 30 years, and all of a sudden it's like, well, you're going to go do this activity without me? Uh, we don't want that, right? So we do have some husbands that are there, um, and we do ask for women that need to have their partners with them. We do say, you know, to be able to honor the space. Yeah. Because what we're talking about is that walk that self-care stuff, sometimes, unfortunately, I know not a lot of times, but sometimes the self-care is from that person, that we just need a little bit of time, 
to get ourselves together to deal with sometimes the kids or sometimes the partner. And so we will say that helps. Let's walk ahead of you, you know, be a protection kind of thing. Um, but allow us to have that in mind. But also, too, we do not want that to become a problem for relationships and things like that. So we say, you know, if the person needs to walk with you, then there's been times when I know I've walked with this uh, one other woman and, and her husband. And so if the conversation between the two of us is that it's okay, then it's fine. But then where we would become really, um, where that community of women would become really careful because there's a lot so the fact of that, what we say is really important together, not together, for each other, you want to get the consent, right? Exactly. But you usually feel like loving the time alone. So, so to be really super clear, yes. <laughs> girl track is a safer space yes. for uh, the members of girl, of girl mm -hmm. track. And if people do walk other times in their parts. You know, maybe your partner can't come with you to the big wall, but you know what? Maybe we all need to walk, so we'll walk a different day all walk. So this is, you know, there these are real life situations yeah. and we find solutions all the time. Any more questions? Oh. So that's a big question and one that we deal with a lot. I want you to one of the things that we see is that no matter how good it is, right, no matter how much we know that it that it that works, there's nothing that you can do to get that work. Um so some of it is with the person, right? Sometimes it might be that you're not the one to invite them, you might say, Oh, well, can you come up there? Right? Because you you come with a lot of baggage. If you know, you're that person that's asking. Um, but one of the things that we talk to in terms of our training is we really kind of connect with the person and find a reason that um, would work for them. And in terms of how, you know, at the end of the day, we're still people of story as well. All right, well, but um, write that down. <laughs> I, I know you gotta really be able to really quickly tap into somebody. Yeah, then sometimes it's not right away. Um, the thing is, sometimes it's a real physical barrier, sometimes it's a fear that they have. Um, if you work around it, it might start to be really strong. Sometimes it's letting her see you glow, right? And be happy and making changes in your life, and then they just can't help you. So we're really, really visual, <coughs> real quick, really, really visual organization in terms of the one. Understanding our community, we knew we had. Right, we have to have people see do swim. She just started swimming, and and guess what? <laughs> On her pages, women are like, "Oh my God, really?" So guess what? There's a group of girl trackers on the cover here that go to the Treme, and they've been swimming for the last two sessions just because you was like, "I'm gonna get back in that pool." I know I'm over 25. I'm going to get back in that pool, and I'm going to do it. Thank you, Thank you. Oh, yeah. Thank you. Sorry. You know, so we want to be able to be, and to that be the vision of it. So we give her some love, be patient with her, maybe invite somebody else um, to, to be the one to ask her out. Um, and just, you know, start small. Yeah. Maybe it's like a couple of people. So time for one more quick question and quick answer. I I have two major questions. Yeah. Okay, so maybe two both. It really have a comment. Okay. So a lot of your social media with the question of um so specifically for black women, I think a lot of your social media and your pushes, like the stress protests and everything reflect for all women. So that's a great way of engaging you all. I think Girl Tech does a great way of mobilizing through social media and getting everybody engaged through social media. But also, even with the New Orleans context, working in the health department with NOLA, you all are helping me work with teams and faith based teams. And so, faith based teams look just like the brown, black, you know, like it's all bodies of people, all races, religions, colors, ethnicities, and creeds. And so, you're now taking this message 
and he writes with his co-partners and then spreading it to other groups to then see the coming of that more wealthy institution and create this in their own community. I think you all go beyond just black women for girlfriends. And then lastly, she was the Lord to all in the war that door and the um walk you are the move for life, but that's not just black women. And right. that's you know, in the world that go through where access to a lot of resources and funding to help through our, you know, at an uh, all time premium, but the cost of living also at all time premium. So be able to do what the surgeon can or so the hmm. walk which became free to highlight. Thank you. Yeah. 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 <laughs> the t-shirts we sell on the on the website and there's a, there's a couple of really cool things that's on the website for sure. Yeah. Um so please do, you know, there's folks that you know wear wear a t-shirt that's not you yeah. know that that's not black women, you know, something the message translates yeah. is what that's we're saying. saying. So we're gonna end on time. <laughs> and so this has been a pleasure. It really has been a pleasure to do this. Uh, here in New Orleans with this group and with Onika and for Naomi. Naomi and I go super far away back when Naomi was getting started in her career as a reporter. I was a reporter at the newspaper that she left. So we go back to the bayou. <laughs> <laughs> and so uh, again, one of the one of the things that we are training for because Onika and I are gonna grab some pizza, go change, then go work out, go for a walk. Because uh, in honor of Harriet Tubman Day, which is March 10th, the entire Girl Trek national team, a team of 10 black women from various parts of the country, we are going to walk Harriet Tubman's first great escape. So it's going to be 10 women, five days, 100 miles on foot. So I need to go break in these new group sneakers. And so we feel like this is very important for us to do this. Because we talk, of, we we don't just talk the talk, but we walk the walk, right? As Girl Trek staff members, we are all also living the mission as well. And why it's very important for us to do this? We're starting off our season, and we feel that we we want to honor ourselves and, and tap into Harriet Tubman's inspiration by walking along the eastern shore where she first set herself free. So it's going to be spiritual. It's going to be a challenge mentally, physically, and we're going to do it. And we're going to document that journey. Uh, please follow us on social media. Where I'm working with some national media outlets on how they can um, day by day show us sweaty and stank walking. <laughs> you know, it's not, I hear there's never be no retro mat lipstick on the trail. Well, maybe. maybe. I don't know. I don't know. When I, when I go hiking, I'm like, let me just put my lipstick on and I'm just going to go. So please send us good vibes, shout us out, retweet us, and that's how you can help spread the movement. You can follow us on Twitter at, at Girl Trek, hashtag Girl Trek on all forms of social media. We have um, our main Instagram is at Girl Trek. There's also a NOLA specific Girl Trek NOLA. You can see the other things specifically going on and NOLA. Please follow us on all forms of social media. Retweet us. Send us virtual hug so we can make it through these 100 miles without yeah. killing each yeah. other. <laughs> no, we'll be fine. We'll be fine. I just, um, two, two short points for me. Like you see, we're at the Edmonds Festival. Get it in. We do everything we're saying here in the city of New Orleans and we celebrate and move and walk. Um, so just wanted to kind of point that out to you. And then the other thing is, there's some girl trekkers that came out to kind of support us and check over. Where is my thing? Thank you, guys. Thank you so much. And then just really, if you just spend a year time, because we think that you also went other places with your like, great participation uh, in classes and work. So we really, truly, really, just really want to thank you um, for giving us the opportunity to kind of share what we're passionate about. Um, we'll stick around in today that anybody has questions, but our information is right here. Um, would love, love, love to see you um, in terms of as we move forward, getting towards our millions. Thank you.